Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Johnny and Chanel waited at the hospital for an appointment with a specialist. Despite Johnny's apologies for hovering over Chanel, she acknowledged that she had been taking pleasure in the additional attention. Before Holly left, they spotted her and had a brief conversation with her. To help Chanel settle her stomach, Johnny offered her oyster crackers. In addition, he informed Chanel of his job search. He had put his list of qualifications on the web and had gotten a couple of perspectives from nearby creation organizations. He had been pondering bringing the list of references down since most film valuable open doors were in California. He was advised to wait it out by Chanel. They were called in for the appointment by a nurse. After the meeting, Chanel and Johnny talked about the specialist's benchmarks for really taking a look at the child's turn of events, 11 weeks and 18 to 20 weeks. They agreed that learning about any potential issues would be especially crucial during the 18-week developmental stage. Johnny quickly apologized to Chanel for making it all about himself while lamenting the waiting and worrying. She reassured him that she was interested in his feelings. Chanel wondered about the ultrasound image, and she said the child seemed to be a bean. Johnny advised her that the bean was a real individual developing within her. They discussed what they should name the child. Given that the name could be used for either a boy or a girl, Chanel suggested Noel. Since the child would be expected around Christmas, Chanel thought it especially fitting. Johnny concurred. Chanel said that even though she was still mad at her mother, she knew in some way what Paulina had done. Afterward, Johnny got a call from a close buddy in the creation business who had Johnny at the top of the priority list for a likely work. Johnny was astonished and appreciative however told the individual he would need to talk the proposal over with his better half. At the point when he finished the call, Chanel drew nearer. Johnny didn't tell her who the call had truly been from or what it had been about. They chose to have dinner. Paulina brought Melinda to her office to talk about the head prosecutor work. Melinda was satisfied to hear that EJ had been expelled from the position however was interested regarding the reason why Paulina had needed to chat with her. Paulina extended to Melinda her old employment opportunity back, and Melinda stunned Paulina by turning down the deal. Melinda was perplexed due to Paulina's other firing. Paulina accepted individuals of Salem required a natural face who was hard on wrongdoing. Paulina further felt that the head prosecutor's position could utilize a tough lady once more. Paulina had burned out on EJ manhandling the task to dole out private retributions and to get his family free. She reminded Melinda that the head prosecutor served at the city hall leader's pleasure, and Paulina would find working with Melinda more pleasurable than working with EJ. At the point when Paulina referenced how E.J. had been utilizing her activities at the lodge against her, Melinda identified with Paulina. Melinda certified that a mother would do anything for her youngster, as Melinda wanted to in any case accomplish for Haley. The ladies sympathized over both having surrendered their youngsters upon entering the world to safeguard them. Melinda was concerned that if she accepted the DA position, E.J. would react negatively, but Paulina argued that Melinda would have her own power against E.J. Melinda thought about it over and concurred that taking the occupation could turn into her best insurance. She acknowledged Paulina's proposition, and the two went out to celebrate over beverages and supper. When Johnny and Chanel walked into the restaurant, Paulina and Melinda were enjoying their meal and toasting. Paulina waved and smiled at them, but when Chanel saw her, she quickly left, and Johnny followed. Paulina looked hurt. After Holly left the medical clinic, she met Tate, whom she had messaged in the recreation area. She focused on the battle with Nicole and the things Holly had said. Holly chided herself for being so savage to her mom. Tate exhorted her that Marlena had once let him know after he'd had a battle with his mom that individuals frequently erupted the most at family. When Holly went to see Tate's grandmother, Marlena had told her something very similar, which Holly confirmed. Holly conceded, however, that the visit had aggravated her vibe. Leo was there when Tate held her hand and consoled her. He attempted to take a picture with his phone while hiding behind the bushes. At the point when Leo bungled with the telephone, Tate and Holly heard the upheaval and hurried over to the shrubbery. They saw Leo, and Tate lamented that Holly and he had been busted by a woman informant. 
both Tate and Holly promptly begged Leo to stay silent. Leo grumbled that he had no material for his section and that the scoop had been the best one he had gone over in weeks. Leo diverted down offers of cash from both the children and promised that he had been dealing with improving personally. Leo referenced how he had as of late lost his extraordinary love, so he'd found Tate and Holly's blamelessness and star-crossed sweetheart's dick super charming. Holly rushed to address that Tate and she weren't darlings, however Leo broke that it appeared to travel that way. When Tate and Holly told Leo that he was the Romeo and Juliet's nurse, he gasped. Leo cited a line from Shakespeare about young love uniting families that were at odds and mentioned all of the reality shows he had watched that had a love theme. He named himself a sucker for adoration, consented to keep Tate and Holly's taboo love secret, erased the photographs he'd taken, and left. And East Tate and Holly shared a kiss. At the De Mara Chateau, EJ found Nicole and Eric kissing in the hallway then vanished once more into the primary room, noticeably shaken. Eric pulled away from Nicole, and both concurred it shouldn't have worked out. As Eric arranged to take Nicole to her room to work it off, EJ returned and acted astounded to see that Nicole was home. Eric made sense of that Nicole had gotten into a battle with Holly and that Eric had brought Nicole home from the bar. EJ mentioned an objective fact about how most men would enjoy taking benefit of Nicole and distinctly expressed gratitude toward Eric for demonstrating gallantry isn't dead. Eric, shaken, left. Afterward, EJ furthermore, Nicole had chosen the couch in the fundamental room as Nicole told EJ about her contention with Holly. EJ could scarcely hold back his displeasure after Nicole informed him what Holly had said. Holly had gone through a lot, Nicole claimed in defense of her daughter. Nicole acknowledged that a portion of her had concurred with Holly's remarks as well. EJ responded quickly that Nicole was a wonderful mother. He advised her not to judge herself harshly. Nicole lamented not calling EJ after the battle, yet she had been appreciative that Eric had helped her before she had accomplished something she was unable to reclaim. EJ asked Nicole what she had done, yet she eased off the remark. EJ wished Nicole had lent against him rather than Eric. EJ was reminded by Nicole that Eric sought her out. EJ vowed to continuously show up for Nicole and took her higher up with the goal that she could rest and recuperate. He saw a message from Eric on Nicole's telephone. EJ responded that he had to leave for a moment but would be back shortly when Nicole asked if he would join her. Nicole had a kissing dream while she was sleeping. But in her dream, she told Eric at the end of the kiss that she still loved him and had wanted the baby to be theirs. Nicole grinned in her rest. At Sloan and Eric's apartment, Sloan settled Jude down after a bottle and wondered what was keeping his father. Eric arrived and explained that he was late because he had been picking up two-for-one chili dogs. Sloan made a comment about Nicole, and Eric again reassured her that Nicole and he were just friends. He acknowledged his history with Nicole but referred to Sloan as his now and forever. When Sloan brought up how Eric had been making good money at the newspaper and that they should be able to afford better meals, Eric mentioned his hopes of saving for a down payment on a house. Sloane was touched and delighted by the idea of buying a house, as she'd never imagined that kind of future for herself. Eric smiled and said he wanted the whole family experience with Sloane. She suggested that one day, that might include more kids, and Eric was receptive to the idea. Later, Sloane admired a photo of Jude on Eric's camera. She was surprised when Eric reminded her that she had taken the photo. Sloane joked that Eric's photography talents were rubbing off on her. Eric called himself, Sloane, and Jude a beautiful family. Eric wanted to build that family by doing well at his job. He told Sloane he needed to leave and take more photographs for his story. Sloane assumed Nicole would be there, too, but Eric said he'd be alone. The answer seemed to settle Sloane, and Eric left without incident. Following Eric's departure, Sloane answered a knock at the door and was none too pleased when EJ invited himself in. Sloan hesitantly asked what he wanted. EJ announced to a distraught Sloan that he was there to take the baby.